Welcome, Welcome to the weekend. weekend. All right. Nice. As you can see, Io is with Always us a pleasure. this week. I'm going to get you running nice and early. OK. Your ultimate Bartley's man. What, what do you mean by that? I mean, you can't just throw that at me at the beginning of the show. What do you mean by Barclays Don't worry. man? Barclays man, right? When you think of, like, the Barclays Premier League, that era, oh, iconic, days. when you're talking, like, Stokes, Everton. OK, yeah. no, OK. You know, do you know what? Portsmouth. I've, I've got yeah. two. I've got two. Portsmouth, yeah. Loire, Loire. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Backflip. And also... Streets won't forget players. Exactly. Stephen Pienaar, Everton. Stephen Pienaar, yeah. great one. Absolute beaut. I'm going to go another Portsmouth. I'm going to go Sully Montari. But I'm also going to go shout out for Michu. Oh! Swansea. Swansea. You're right yeah. right <laughs> I'm going to go for the original long throw specialist, Rory Dillard. Oh, that's a great one. And, and, and he's some scoring in the Premier League yeah. now as well. So there you go, double yeah, really good. Love it. That has been dominating social media this week. It has been incredible. But let's have a look then at the fixtures for this weekend. We've got a bumper Saturday. There is eight games on. You can see Southampton Man United kicks us off. There's five games on at three o'clock. You've got Aston Villa Everton the 5.30. And we've even got a Saturday night game. And it's the best one of the weekend. Bournemouth against Chelsea. And on Sunday, you can see it there. <laughs> the North Come London on. derby. Tottenham against Arsenal. You know I'm a no, I, I, know, well, I am a bit. I am a bit. We'll talk about that a little later on. <laughs> anyway, coming up this week, we're putting all the tough questions to Ruben Diaz and Bernardo Silva. Do you know the origins of its breed? A French bulldog. Mm -hmm. Would it be French? <laughs> Perhaps. There's a good chance. <laughs> Mentz and I went down to the Tottenham Hotspur training ground where I had a little surprise for him and he was as shook as what it could be. You'd be scared of a hamster. Yeah, I don't like small things. Oh my God. <laughs> and speaking of surprises, I wonder if there'll be one in North London this weekend. I'll be with the Front 3 podcast to discuss the game that's given us plenty in the past. Oh. oh, good to see everyone. Honestly, I mean, can't teed it up there. North London derby. Talk to me oh, well, why about you, this. Why don't you talk to us about I mean, this? I was, I was no, nine it. goals last season. But, I mean, it's, it's never not going to get action. The North London derby is a beautiful moment for an Arsenal fan, considering the most recent times. We, we've walloped Tottenham. Yeah. I was just going to say, Liv, I'm glad that I was in the studio and you can't hide behind... <laughs> yeah, I know. Down the line. I mean, we're, we're looking... It's a great game for a neutral. Yeah, it's... Yeah. It's, it's, it's a derby game of all the derby games that's finally poised as ever. Are you nervous? I am a bit nervous. I mean, obviously, we're losing two key players. Odegaard, Declan Rice. That is massive. Uh, two, of, two of, I would say, two of your four... When I think of Arsenal, Saliba, Sa Saliba yeah. Saka, Rice and Odegaard are your four best players. Yeah, yeah. To, to, have, to not have two of them in a game that you already don't really know where it's going to go, when even when both teams are fully fit, because mm -hmm. even though your squad is better than theirs mm -hmm. and your first team is better than theirs, in the North London derby, we know anything, genuinely anything can happen. And Io, just to add a little bit more doom to that, on, I, always <laughs> feel, I always feel after the international break uh -huh. that the ground gets levelled a little bit. We okay. don't quite know what's going to happen. Yeah, but look, let's face it, man, if Arsenal want a gun excuse the pun, uh, forward this season and, and, and prove that actually this, this squad is able to cope with all different situations. Jorginho and Partey in the middle have to do the job. Also, I mean, let's not forget the attacking prowess. Trossard, Saka, Havertz still there. Raheem Sterling. I know we had a chat about Raheem Sterling before. I think he could be the extra little bit of spice that Arsenal need this season. On a personal note, I just think if we can get four or five key goals out of Raheem Sterling this season, in a, in, in a match like that, that's when you bring a player like that on and maybe does that little sneaky, sneaky thing around the back of the post. Little tapping. That's all I ask for. I mean, Raheem, do the thing. Yeah, you're going to need him to play like he did for Manchester City and play a similar role to yeah, what he yeah, did yeah, for Manchester for sure. City. But Arteta because... knows him really well. Yeah. Come on. I'm intrigued about that. I'm intrigued. I don't... I think Arsenal fans have gone too far one way and Chelsea fans are going too far the other. Yeah. I think he's probably going to be somewhere in the middle. Maybe not as good as you expect, but not as bad as Chelsea fans expect. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I know what you mean. I know what but you I know mean. What you mean. An extra five goals in big games could be the top. I don't know. Can Arsenal afford to lose this game already? No, I, I just don't. Th I just don't think if Arsenal are genuinely thinking of being title contenders, these are the kind of games that Arsenal's have right. to win without a shadow of a doubt. Psychologically, you never want to lose a North London derby. Mm. I think there's too much football to still play this season. Mm. 
to say that it's going to have City. too much of a detrimental effect. Some good news for Arsenal fans. Go and on. maybe not no surprise. Let, let us know, let us right? know, go on. The timing <laughs> of this is really interesting it's beautiful. for me, though. But Mikel and Arteta signing a... Uh, Mikel and two... Arteta? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> two people. Is, 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 is he got, no, is he got a mate Antonio. called Arteta as well? And then they said Mikel Antonio. Mikel, uh, Mikel Arteta... Uh, signing a two-year extension yeah, to his deal. Yeah, no, no, that's massive for Arsenal fans. And I think the timing of it just before the North London derby is absolutely perfect. You know, good vibes and all that kind of stuff. But if you think of the journey that he's been on with Arsenal, if you think of players that aren't there anymore, Ozil, Aubameyang, all mm. that kind of stuff, that's what he inherited. To where Arsenal are right now, the last two seasons really going toe-to-toe -to -toe in Manchester City. I mean, this is fantastic news for Gunners, and I know we're all happy. Yeah, you should, you should be happy, but I do think that we're getting into territory now yeah. where Arsenal have to win something. I think so. I think yeah. also this is a really selling season. I think you're spot on there, yeah. Liv. He has to do something, whether it's an FA Cup, whether it's, it's a Carabao something. Cup, or something to yeah. show that, you know what, he's making progress. Let's not forget he's already won an FA Cup, but it was kind of like that doesn't uh, count. he came in for the final. I mean, <laughs> let, let me just say this. If Arsenal had a player yeah. like Thierry Henry, oh. it would be making... <laughs> this game a little bit easier, oh, right? Yes. And talking of North London derby, if we are talking about iconic goals in the North London derby, this one oh. is right up there. Oh. I mean... How can you forget? How far back has he picked that ball up? Take him out. Take he, he, even Do you see the strength? Do you see yeah. the strength of that player? Oh, oh fakey. Drop the shoulder. Boom. That, TT at his finest. That is... I mean, we are looking at the greatest player to have ever played in the Premier League, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my but, word. But that is the statue outside the Arsenal Stadium. Yeah. Oh, you know why. Iconic. It was yeah. iconic, isn't it? It's a phenomenal goal. I mean, that is uh, one of Thierry Henry's ultimates. And here he is discussing it with Michael Timms. This one is a run. If Errington is behind me, I make sure that with, with man, I'll let him, you know, see you later. Just sit down. But then what was good after is, I think, is Ledley King and Carr, that I make them believe I'm going to go. That's, that's and finishing with my left. Yeah. Mm. So while, while I'm, I'm, I think I'm dumbing uh, King and, and Carl, I'm, I can see Dennis coming. But I, in my mind, I'm already stepping to, to, to finishing with my yeah. left. And all I'm thinking is, if I don't score there, he's going to kill me. But then I did score, so... And it's against Tottenham, and... Yeah. And then, and then, you know, people always remember that I, I went back the whole way to, to celebrate in front of them. How good was oh, that? Oh, Thierry, oh. I mean, for, for Timsey as well, doing that interview, like, yeah. he's the biggest Arsenal fan. Oh, he's a big Arsenal fan, fan isn't he? So yeah. To be sat across, and Thierry and me, I think everyone knows, is as nice as he seems mm. in interviews. He's just lovely and, yeah, iconic. Uh, now, you can find out if that was his ultimate goal uh, by watching the full feature, which is available on the Premier League's YouTube channel right now. Mm. All right, let's head over to the fourth man today. We're going to head over to see where Carl is at. There we can see he's in West London ahead of the North London derby and he's with the Front Three podcast guys right now having a quick chat. Kyle, you know North London derby, it's always a beauty, isn't it? Oh, of course it is, Io. A huge weekend. And who better to break it down with than two of the three members of the Front Three podcast? We've got Dan and we've got Will. AJ's not here, but today, guys, I'm the third member. This is my audition to join the podcast. Let's talk about North London Derby. This man will be featuring, I'm sure, this weekend. I'm not going to give away too much about what's happening here, but we've got a quiz coming up very, very shortly. Will, I'll start with you. You're the resident Arsenal fan. We can see it on the jacket. How big is this game? How big is the North London derby? It's one of the biggest games in Arsenal season, whether you're talking about this season, any season, especially the context now, the fact that we've already dropped two points. And I know we've got lots of Arsenal fans saying the season is over because we've dropped two points. But like I said, the context is key. Um, we've got a lot of players missing. We have to win, especially against our arch rivals as well, Tottenham. Um, so it's going to be a very big game. Dan, you're the neutral when it comes to this fixture. However, the other two members of the podcast, both Arsenal fans, Correct. have they been insufferable uh, leading up to this one, uh, ready for the Tottenham game? Do they think they're going to win? They always think they're going to win. That's Arsenal <laughs> fans. Until the game kicks off, one pass goes wrong and they're oh, this is what I'm saying. This is why we're going to lose. But I'm here to sort of keep their foot on the ground and keep them a bit sensible. 
and talk to me about this weekend as the neutral. Do you enjoy watching the North London derby? Do you think it's one of the biggest in the country? You know, I had I had this thought in my mind that currently with the state of, let's say, La Liga, it might probably be the biggest derby in world football right now. That is a big shout. That is a I'm big just shout. throwing it out there. Um, so, so of course, definitely, I think everyone will be tuning in. And the way the build-up has been, is, is, is should be a big, big game for, for the neutrals also. Will, we had some talk about it in the studio, the absentees. I mean, no Declan Rice. We, we've talked yeah. so much about the incident there. Odegaard injured as well. Calafiore, set, he's, not set to, he's not featured, I should say. Is this maybe where Raheem Sterling could come in and show what he's worth? Yeah, he's a big game player. He's played for the biggest clubs in England. So I'm excited to see him play. I'm excited to see what Arteta is going to do as well because this kind of puts him in the spotlight now. He hasn't got his best players. Let's see what he's made of. Do you think that the Arsenal team is strong enough when it comes to depth to be able to go into big games like this and still come out with three points? Well, I guess the proof will be in the pudding because if you look at our transfer dealings, the players that left our club, there was a lot of Arsenal fans in unison who thought actually our squad depth isn't that great. And so I think this will be the real test. There. It's a big North London derby as well, a big game as well. So I think this will put um, our squad to the test to see whether or not you know, our summer transfer window has actually worked. Dan, Mikel Arteta, contract extension until 2027. Does he have to win a trophy soon just to prove how good he is as a manager? It goes without saying. When you take on these jobs, and especially a club like Arsenal with the history they've had since Wenger left and him coming in now, I think that's what everyone else is looking forward to. Can he win the trophy? Yes, he's playing good football. They're attacking, they're, they're keeping clean sheets, they're doing all these other things now but you have to go that extra mile. Can he win it, though? It's another thing. I think coming up against the juggernauts that are oh, Manchester City, we had Jurgen Kopp did that with with against against Pep for all these years, and he only ever got to win it once. Would Arteta do it? I don't know. If, if anyone can do it, though, he knows the dark arts that maybe Pep knows that he's been getting over the line with all these years, so he might be able to stop him. I still don't think they're strong enough to beat Manchester City to the title. Oh, right, well, you guys are podding right now, as uh, people will say. Yeah. We have got a quiz, though. I want to come into sure. this. We're going head-to-head. -head. Higher or lower, that's the theme of this. There'll be different topics, OK? Uh, will, as the Arsenal fan, I'm just going to say you're going first yeah, on this okay. one, all right? It's all about North London derby goals in the Premier League. Higher or lower, does uh, Bakayo Saka have more than Rafael van der Vaart? Is he higher or lower? I'll say higher. Oh, you're wrong. You're wrong on that one. <laughs> Rafael van der Vaart has four, but Kyle Saka only has three. In the Premier League. In the Premier League, <laughs> that is. OK, Dan, higher or lower? North London derby goals, Rafael van der Vaart with four, or Gareth Bale? That's a... Mmm... <laughs> Gareth Bale. Let's go, Gareth Bale. Higher? Higher. Correct. There we are. One point for you. OK, then. Next up, North London derby goals. Gareth Bale or Robert Perez? Higher. You Perez. think Perez higher? Yeah. Why do you think that? Because he's played so many Lon North London derbies. So. I'm making sure you're not checking my notes <laughs> right here. Okay? That is correct. Yes. One one between you. Right. We are going to uh, change now the topic, OK? This is now North London derby appearances, OK? Robert Perez, he's got 11. Do you think he's got more than Ray Parler? I would have to say no. Ray Parler's got more. You are correct. Look at this. Come on, Dan. Ray Parler sure has fan. 19. <laughs> OK, next up, Ray Parler against Hugo Lloris. Higher or lower, who has the most North London derby appearances? Ooh. I'm going to say Hugo's got more North London derby appearances. Correct. 2-2. Two, two. Hugo Lloris has got 22 of those. He's the most amount of North London derbies in Premier League history, if you didn't know. OK, here we are. Next up, uh, managed and played for Mikel Arteta. But Hugo Lloris, higher or lower? Hugo Lloris, higher. 22. I think I gave that one away by saying that he's the, the moment. Yeah, I saw that smile on your face just there. That's another point. Two, three, two. All right, and here we are. 
Mikel Arteta yeah. or Son Jung Min, who's got the most? Son, he's got the most. Uh, uh, he's, uh, Son, <laughs> Son's got more, he does, uh, yeah, three, three, <laughs> which means we've got a tiebreaker very, very quickly. Um, who has the most amount of cards out of the teams, OK? Or uh, how, ma oh, so how many yellow cards have been shown in this fixture in Premier League history? How many? So we need to yeah. get a number of the yellow cards. The closest to it wins. 234. Four. Oh, I thought you meant in combined, so... In total. Oh, 234. What are 30, you going for, Will? I'm going for 250. I'm going to reveal the answer a little bit later on. I'm going to keep these guys sweating uh, just here. But, guys, uh, thank you for that. North London Derby chat. I'm looking forward to it. Let's keep it at Spurs, though. And it's time for a pawsome feature. See what I did there? Liver Mentz, over to you. Ruff, ruff. <laughs> We've come to the Tottenham Hotspur training ground, haven't we, Mentz? Yeah, and I don't know why. <laughs> I know exactly what me and Mentz are doing here at Spurs today. What would be, like, the worst-case scenario for you? Uh, probably, like, a snake. A snake? OK. What about, um, like, pets? A pet, like a hamster. I suppose you'd be scared of a hamster. Yeah, I don't like small things. Well, there are some small things here today. OK. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is this not the best day at work ever? Oh, my God. Hello. Should we see Shadow? Nah, Shadow's looking <laughs> massive, though. <laughs> Come on, then. Who's this? Hello. Oh, wow. As long as not... Are you Shadow. actually, like, you're not actually scared of them? I'm not, like, t petrified, but what I am... Um, my heart rate is up what if, right now. What if he say. barks? Nah, if he barks, I'm going home. <laughs> Right, we're now joined by Ira, who works for All Dogs Matter. Yeah. Ira, just first of all, yeah. Mentz was a little bit apprehensive, weren't you? No, what do we, what do you <laughs> mean? You... Look, I'm still apprehensive. Why? Why? Because, I don't know, I'm just... <laughs> right now, I seem calm, but I am panicking, because this is a very big Shadow dog. is the calmest, coolest dog that yeah, you can Yeah, to be meet. fair, Shadow has looked after me since I've been here. Oh, OK, he's going yeah. away. Keep control of your dog. No, but Liv, <laughs> come on, man. It's... I'm only joking. Do you want there. snack and stuff? <laughs> no, 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 I can't be seen. I can't be seen. I can't, I can't be, be seen with a dog that's <laughs> Tell us just a little bit about All Dogs Matter, because that's who you work for, isn't it? Yeah, so we're a rehoming charity. Yeah. We're a rescue and rehoming charity. So all these dogs have come into us through the charity. Shadow does actually have a home now. He's a male husky. Um, I, was, I was hoping to take him home, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> um, but he is one of our ambassador dogs. Grady is a, a bulldog, an old-time old, old bulldog, who came in um, to us... Uh, a year ago, uh, he only has three legs, so but he's still looking for his forever home. Snek came in to us um, about three weeks ago. We are seeing an increase in chihuahuas coming in, particularly since lockdown. Because they're worth more money, people tend to sell them online rather than give them to a charity. Yeah. And it can be three or four homes till they end up with a charity like us and we find them a long-term suitable home. And how successful has this partnership been? Tottenham have been great, or Spurs have been putting billboards up at the two, the first two matches yeah. of the season. It's definitely um, brought in lots of traction. Yeah. We would like to encourage people to adopt, not yeah. buy dogs. You know, there's plenty of dogs that need homes, so we're just trying to, if anything, get the word out there. And there's so many beautiful dogs here, and I think it's time to, to meet some very excited Spurs yeah. players. Let's do it, let's do it. Madders, James, what should, I call, what should I call you? Olivia, Liv. <laughs> Olivia, Liv. Madders is uh, good. This is Alice. Yeah, yeah we're cute, isn't she? What, what, dogs, what dogs do you have? So I've got a little French bulldog. You've got, haven't you got a massive... I feel like I've seen I've got, a massive one. Yeah, I've got one. a big boy, uh, Cain dog? Corso, called Denzel. Did you grow up in no, a dog family? my dad's allergic to uh, the fur, so we could never oh. have one, but I always wanted one. So Did as you? soon as I moved out and, like... I think when I first got settled into my apartment in Leicester when I was like 20, oh, 21, I got little Diego, yeah. Diego. <laughs> yeah, Who's was, that named oh. after? Uh, you know the saber-toothed tiger from Ice Age? <laughs> no, it's not. He was one of my favourite characters growing up. I'm going to get told off if Alice has a wee on the picture, yeah? Yeah, the, the ground staff are already looking at us going, why have you got a dog? <laughs> Do 
Yes, I'm just with Dan and this beautiful dog here, Oria. So what dog do you have at home? I have a Pomeranian, you know. She's, the, she's famous because she's the best dog in the world, so I give her to all my friends also. <laughs> so like in Sweden, they all get to keep her. She's now in Sweden, she's oh, doing nice. a world tour. So, <laughs> so good. Do good. you miss her? I miss her every day, you know, but uh, I will soon see her in one week and then she's staying with daddy for, for, for the rest of her life. When I play before a game, sometimes, honestly, I just think about my dog, you know, because, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's a family member, you want to make her proud, so... What would you say your advice? Someone like me, I'm kind of I'm kind of scared of dogs. That's you should not be. You yeah, that's, why, that's why I let yeah. you hold, hold her. You should not be. <laughs> yeah. What would you advise to someone like me who's kind of apprehensive? How do I get over my fear yeah. of dogs? Oh, no. Keep going, go, yeah, later, later. You just have to stay calm always. Just stay calm, give it your hand, let it, let the dog smell you, you know? Never run. That's the worst yeah, thing when you pro, start that's running. Problem. No, you should run. never run. You should always stay calm and just be friendly, you know? <laughs> you see, you see how good of a dog she is? Yeah, no, she's a very good dog. I'm actually, I'm actually all good. <laughs> such a good dog. See, but that's, that's another thing I'm scared of, because like, if I feed it and it, <sighs> Nah, you should be afraid of sharks or something, I would understand, <laughs> yeah, but no, no. dogs, dogs are good, man. A lot of people, when they say, like, their dogs play such a big part in, mm. you know, your mental health and just keeping you positive and motivated. Is that true? Oh, 100%. Yeah. But a dog never knows any different, does he? So when you get home, no matter what sort of day you've had... And they're just smiley. You know, I think dogs are the, one of the best things about Life. this world we live in, yeah. yeah. And dogs like Alice. So we are encouraging all football fans to... Oh, yeah, if you're thinking about getting a dog, I just think you will not regret it. And especially, like, it's like a double double whammy, isn't it? Because you get you get to have the dog that you'll end up loving 100% because they're the best creatures on Earth, and you get to rescue a dog that's yeah. looking for a family, I guess. Yeah. I would say, if you're thinking about it, just go for it. Yeah. Because they're the best. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, you're very Is welcome. Is this not the best day at work ever? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I know, and I really like Alice. I feel like we've got a little bond yeah, already. Yeah, like you do have a little bond. Even off well. camera a little bit. I was just she looked at me and I thought, yeah, yeah you're the we're one. We're going to be mates. How'd you find that? After today, I feel good. Like, do you feel has it like changed? Because you are a little bit scared. Has it changed yeah. like your like perception of them? Yeah, because all the dogs um, were super friendly, and they also so like nice. they all they need our help as well. I know. So there was that element to it. And then just to see how, especially Kulisevsky, the way he loved the, the dog, I just thought, wow. Like, like, they need your help, they need our help. So what we're saying is Mentz is going to adopt a dog. Hold, hold on, <laughs> hold on. But I'm feeling the husky, because oh, I look good with the husky. Yeah, you did look good with the husky, so, to be fair. Shadow, that's yeah. my guy. Yeah, I'll take the three-legged bulldog. OK, And you yeah, take yeah. the husky. The husky, Done? yeah. Love it. I love that. Do you know what? Aww. Lovely little thing with the two of you, but can I just have a moment for James Madison calling his dog Diego out of a character of Ice Age? I mean, it's it was... me thinking Diego Maradona, and he's like, <laughs> are you crazy? I mean, that was the last... I don't really know what I was expecting. When I, when I asked that question, I mean, yeah, Diego Mar would make sense, wouldn't it, Definitely Diego would. Maradona? You'd go, yeah, fair. Like, his dog is so, you know, just powerful. Massive, and, massive. You know, and you just think, yeah, no, Ice Age. Ice Age. Character Who would have thought? Age. What a tenuous I mean, link. I mean, I'm into music. My dog's called Prince. But if I said I named him Prince after Prince William... <laughs> I'd be like, <laughs> are you right, JJ? <laughs> uh, right, well, Mens is usually on the sofa, isn't he? But he's not here today, obviously. <laughs> yeah, we got an upgrade. Uh, hey, hey we thank got you. An upgrade. Just don't tell him, just don't but tell him. But he's actually come on the show to talk to us. He's taken a little bit of time out of his really busy schedule. Mm. Here he is. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mens. <laughs> <Mence. laughs> Can't believe it. <laughs> Uh, Mens, just first of all, um, in the start of that VT, you said you'd be most scared of a hamster. Can you please explain? Yo, chill. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't draw me out like that. I'm, I'm scared of small things. <laughs> I'm scared of small animals because you can't see them coming. You feel me? So that's why I like Shadow because he's big. I can see him from a far away so I can get my running on early. So hamster, you don't know where he is, isn't it? Get me. Then before you know it, he's in your shirt. <laughs> Bro, yeah. Bro, you, 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 you say you, you weren't scared of Shadow, bro. You, you kept your distance, man. You, you're also scared of dogs, real talk. Bro, I can't lie. I'm <laughs> petrified. That whole, my heart rate, that whole shoot was up. This is what I'm trying to say, bro. Look how big that Shadow is. And I'm trying to, like, keep it cool because lives there. And I don't, I don't want it to think, like, I'm a scaredy cat, in it. But really and truly, bro, my heart was pumping. I mean, I, I couldn't tell, but when you were walking Shadow at first, 
You looked like you were hyperventilating. <laughs> 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 it really did. Um, I man, was, so, bro. I really was. <laughs> so, so good to have you on. We're here, mm. sat here. We were discussing the, the North London derby, massive game in the yeah, Premier huge. League. Um, Liv thinks that possibly this is a can't-lose game for Arsenal. What do you think? You know what? I hate to admit this, but I actually agree with Liv for once. <laughs> Arsenal got to win this game. they got to win this game because, like, also, it's a test for Arteta. How good mm. are you without your players, That's bro? That's what I said, Let's yeah. see. Especially because... Let's without, see. Without, it's not even like, you know, you're missing two players, but they're missing Odegaard, they're missing Rice, but also Marino's injured, their new summer signing. Calafiori's injured. Mm. Obviously, Raheem Sterling might play, but how, how do you see it going? Because I, I actually think... I think it's going to be a draw. I'm going to sit on the fence, but what do you reckon? Yeah, I'm getting draw as well. I can't believe I'm agreeing with Liv. This is annoying me. What's I'm going, going on, too, man? <laughs> What's happened to you? You're all right. You're feeling all right. Know. You got I'm a just, headache. You got a temperature. Because I'm because I'm far away from you guys. Well, let's feed you in Helsinki, bro, man. All that dry fun. fish they showed you, man. <laughs> Come on. The thing is, Liv, Liv actually chats a lot of sense when she's not talking about Chelsea. That's, that's, that's the truth. Yeah, that's true. That is true. That is true. Mentz, it's been a pleasure yeah, uh, a little brother. bit. Um, good luck for the rest yep. of your time in Helsinki. <laughs> Take it easy, buddy. I love you guys. See you, brother. We'll see, see you next peace. week. All right. Bye. So, we are going to take a what quick break. Is he... When we come back, we'll keep hitting the target. What are you doing? What? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how I was going then. Well done. <laughs> next up on Welcome to the World Cup. <laughs> Just go somewhere on the map. I don't know. You know, anywhere on the America, map. America, Canada. We go to anywhere at all. We go to New York. We go to New York. We go. I don't know exactly. Go New where, York. I don't know exactly where New York is, mate. Hi, I'm Hamza Chowdhury. What would I do if I wasn't a footballer? Stay tuned to find out. If I wasn't a footballer, I'd be a bus driver. Oh, no, I can't say that, actually. I don't have a driving license. Um, did... I, yeah? I, 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 I thought I heard that wrong, <laughs> but bus driver it is. <laughs> He's gone, oh, wait, actually, no. Wait, but how does he know that? He hasn't even got a driving licence. Yeah. Did he say that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's, anyway, let, let's move on to the fixtures this weekend because we've got some absolute bumper matches on Saturday. As you can see, Brighton, Ipswich, Crystal Palace, Leicester, Liverpool also uh, are going to be playing Nottingham for us. But let's face it, Sunday's the day, really. The big North London derby, Tottenham versus Arsenal. Ooh. Can't wait for that. Ooh. Bit nervous, though. Anyway, you might have noticed that it's actually Friday the 13th and usually Ooh. Friday the 13th is sort of a day of unluckiness, if you think about it. Mm. So I thought I'd go down the line here and just try and figure out what our unlucky stories are in life. So for me, in my life story, I remember I was hosting a programme once and every Christmas, the, the, the mayor of Norway comes to London and you've got to put this massive Christmas tree up in the middle of Trafalgar Square. Mm -hmm. And it was my job that year to put like the lovely star on top of it. So I'm talking to the, the guys, the construction guys, they're like, are you, are you good to go? I was like, let's do it, let's do it. Bear in mind, it's like a 10 foot tall tree. It's the day after, the mayor of Norway is coming to see this tree. So I'm there, go up in a little crane up the top. Oh and as I'm God. screwing it on, I drop the star, man, smashes <laughs> straight down. A real fallen floor. star. A, a real fallen <laughs> star, exactly. A shooting star, chuck the thing. But yeah, what about you? Oh, um, oh God, I, I think mine, mine will most probably uh, be missing a flight. Um, getting the train to the airport, uh -huh. and there was four different... Like, my original train got cancelled. I then got on the next train, which what? was delayed. I hate that. Then when I got to where I was connecting, one of the passengers caused a disruption, which meant another 15 minutes of a delay. And when I got to the airport, I got through the security gate. Yeah. And then where I needed to check in disappeared. And the guy at the, oh. the, guy at the That's the domino the effect of unluckiness. Nothing, yeah. Oh, that was so unlucky. All right, I don't think Liv's got any I've life ones. So but lucky, do you know what? Let, let, let's let's stick to something you know really well. You've been so lucky, have you? Lies. <laughs> anyway, talk to she me. Works with us. What, what, do you, what do you think your, your your team has ever been unlucky? Oh. I, I mean, Chelsea. Let's I face know. It. I mean, there's been a few. I, I mean, there's one that there's one that tops them all, and it is JT slipping in Moscow in 2008. <laughs> I don't think you can get as unlucky as as the 
fifth penalty in a penalty shootout to win the Champions League yeah. for the first time for your club, yeah. your club captain, because your best player in Didier Drogba gets sent off, you've got to take the fifth penalty. He steps up and he slips. Oh. And the funny thing about it he is... He didn't Chris, really step, Chris step up then, did he? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. You're a what? Liverpool fan. You can't laugh about slipping. Well, oh, oh, Gerard. <laughs> anyway, give us one. Um, mine has got to be, I think, 2009. And I still can't believe whenever I see this goal, oh. how it wasn't cancelled out. the best. The Darren best. Bent's goal. Is it the, the, is it the balloon? The beach, the, ball. Ball. <laughs> the beach ball. The beach ball. I'm sorry. Ooh, the best part about this is that Pepe Reina goes to save the beach ball. <laughs> yeah, he goes to dive hey, away Always the beach a pro. Ball. Always a pro. Where should the ball look? Look. Oh, he goes to the right. It's a that is still one of the funniest moments. Look, it goes to the right. To oh, be fair, man, I hear it, man. That is but you such a I travesty. You're disallowed. It's, it would be disallowed if there was another ball on yeah, the pitch, yeah, but yeah. typically that doesn't count. But it's unlucky, it's that's why it's unlucky. It's, it's so unlucky, unlucky. unlucky. But it's, it's hilarious. You know, I'm, I'm going to go really recent, and we can debate it all we want. I still think Declan Rice getting sent off against Brighton. No, oh, not feeling know. it. That was very unlucky, look, man. He, look at him, look, look at him. He, look, he's just like, nah, yeah. nah, nah, nah. He's, he was like, I just need to calm this down, man, because I need to talk to the referee you real don't quick. And the referee thinks that. he's actually obstructing play. I mean, that the rudeness of that. How dare you? Look, bear in mind, João Pedro earlier booted the ball. But it doesn't Come matter on. if you kick it 100 metres or two metres or one metre. He kicked the ball away to interfere with play. Yellow card. That's not even unlucky. Come on, Declan from me. That's not unlucky. Very unlucky, son. Anyway, let's head yeah. out over to Kyle, who's in West London. Kyle, what are we saying? What's more, your most unlucky moment in life or in football? <laughs> oh, I, uh, I mean, growing up a Manchester City fan, it all felt quite unlucky, I'm not going to lie, but the most unluckiest I've ever felt... I wasn't at the Aguero moment goal. I wasn't there at that game against QPR. I felt extremely unlucky. I mean, what a moment. The greatest moment in Premier League history, I would say. And where was I? Not in the stadium. Are you so kidding? I felt where? very unlucky that day. I... Where were you, Kyle? Where were you? Um, I was with friends watching. I was actually at university at the time. Oh, so um, I decided to not go to the game. Oh, I but know. that is one of the most Stupid iconic decision. moments, not just for Manchester City, in Premier League history. Oh, I, oh, I know. You have to remind <laughs> me, OK? Yeah, you don't All right, have to get, Take me. it away, bro. No. Take it away. Talk let's to the boys. Move on. <laughs> yeah, let, let's move on. Uh, before we get into your unlucky moments, I know everyone's been itching, sat on the edge of their seat to find out the results of our quiz before we've added up all of the yellow cards in the North London Derby fixture. Will, you said 250. Yeah. Dan, you said 234. I can confirm... 268 yellow cards. Will, you get that one. You get all three points, although Dan's not happy. Wait to go to VAR for the scores before. But let's not talk about no, that one. No. Let's talk about unlucky moments. Yeah. Uh, Will, yep. you won the quiz, so I'll come to you first. Uh, any unlucky moments as an Arsenal fan, maybe? One that doesn't even involve your team? <laughs> None. Um, <laughs> so, last year... Spurs against Tottenham. Everyone's saying that Tottenham was going to throw the game. Spurs against Manchester City. Yeah, 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 Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. And then games 1-0, 86 minute. Son goes through one-on-one -on -one against Ortega. Usually, that's his bread and butter. I mean, we're watching it just now. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, I was in the stadium. <laughs> my heart was in my mouth at that moment. If there's one player you want one-on-one... -on -one, it's him. It's him, and that's exactly how <laughs> Pep felt. That's how I that's felt how when he missed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a moment it was. Unlucky yeah. for you. No. Might have been lucky for some Manchester City fans. <laughs> I won't name who. Uh, Dan, let's talk about your unlucky moments, because when you were explaining this one to me off camera before, <laughs> I was quite shocked at some of the, the figures, the statistics you were throwing around. Talk to me about yours. Right, yeah. Mine, mine will be Fulham's 17-18 season, you know, a, a few years away from the Premier League, we come in and, and we spend money on some big players, some players that had pre in the previous year really performed really well, so we invested a lot of money. And it was a time where clubs weren't spending as much money and so Fulham really went out and bought about... £100 know, million pounds yes, spent, yes, all right? Yes, yes, yes. And probably the worst season <laughs> <laughs> Fulham's ever suffered. 
Right, yeah, three managers got relegated right back to the championship. Wow, it definitely that sounds unlucky like, yeah. for both there of you go. guys. Friday the 13th, <laughs> an unlucky day. But for Will, who wins our quiz, not too unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well, Will. All of those little wins matter, don't they? <clears throat> they Come do. On, man, here we That's go. Tottenham are going to show us. <laughs> they'll, they'll need it, they'll Whoa. need it. Tottenham are going to show us this week. <laughs> they'll need it. Uh, right, time now for target practice. And despite being just two weeks in, Cody Gakpo, as you can see, has set the bar high. It's only him and Jared Bowen that have done it. There you go, Cody Gakpo with 500 points. Next up, can Manchester City's Portuguese pair beat that? <laughs> Welcome back to Target Practice and welcome to the weekend. Joined today by Bernardo Silva and Ruben Diaz here at Manchester City. Guys, you are working as a team here. You can have eight questions in this game, OK? OK. Uh, you need to place your magnets on the square where you think the answer is. Now, if you get the correct one, you'll get 100 points straight away. One square out will get you 50 points. Two squares out, 25, three, zero. And if you are four squares out, then it'll actually lose you 25 points. Now, Ruben, you made your Portugal debut at home in 2018. Both of you were playing, but who was the opponent? Portugal uh, versus... T uh, Tunisia? Well, where do you think that is on the map? No. Uh, Tunisia, Tunisia is North Africa. Tunisia, it's around here. You're, sure? You're actually right. looking for the capital of the place as Tunis, well. Tunis, Tunis. So, yeah. I think I would go 15, but I don't know. Or, 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 or. No, no. Tunis, Tunisia is L15. L15. And you were one out. Question number two now. For you, Bernardo, obviously City will be in the Champions League again this year, but who against did you score your first Champions League goal? Who was it against? For City. For City, I think it was. I think Shaka. it was against Schalke. You think it's JF16? Yeah, go. As a guess. You think six. Was it Schalke? It was not Schalke. Oh. It was it was Basel. Yeah, 4 0 away win, February 20th. But it's close, huh? It is good, yeah. You were K15 for that one, so again, so one. 50 it's points. One. Your new signing, Savinho, has hit the ground running really well at Manchester City, but where is his birthplace? Oh my god. Brazil? Yeah, we, don't know, we don't know where. Do you know where? Which no city? Idea. That's why I said but oh my Brazil god. <laughs> and, and Brazil is massive. We need to go, we need to go either T10. Do you know if he for, likes the beach? Does he like the beach? R yeah, but what R if you go R10 and you're in the middle? No, no the, thing, the thing is, the thing is, here it covers a lot of land. T10 or S10? What's your Brazilian geography like? S10 or T10? What do you think? <laughs> My Brazilian geography isn't the best. No, no, no. Um, no, R11. I would go R11. Sao Mateus, Brazil, is R11. Congratulations. Man, that's a big one. Well done, mate. That's a bang Where is he from? Where is he from? Sao Mateus. Sao Mateus. Sao Mateus. Sao Mateus. Yeah. We're looking for the birthplace now of the Man City midfielder who made the most passes and had the most amount of touches in the Premier League last season. Who was that? The Man City midfielder. Jodri. Madrid. Madrid. You're, you're bang on. Jodri Madrid. Where is it on the map? I think it's L14, no? This is a tricky one. It's a tricky one. Madrid, 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 it's right on Just the line. Just while we're on Rodri, by the way, guys, I mean, the, the Ballon d'Or voting is oh, open soon. Do you think Rodri's in with a shout? Yeah, of course. He's got very good chances. Me, as a guess, I would go L14. 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 Is it higher? It was K14. I'm so sorry. No, you're, you're joking. You're doing really well. You're but doing really well. But this one doesn't... This one shouldn't It's count. very close, down <laughs> to the line. It's very close. I yeah, know, right on the line. Right down the middle. Um, OK, now, I know that you're both dog lovers. You've got your dog named after your teammate, John Stones. Do you know the origins of its breed and where that capital city is? My, my dog? Yeah. A French bulldog? Mm hmm Would it be French? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> There's a good chance. <laughs> Would it be French? Well, which one do you think he said French? Let's, should we go to let, Paris? Let, let's something. go straight in. Should we go to, should we go to Paris? We go, to, we, go, we go to Paris. Uh, it can be K15, eh? But we K15 go... covers a lot of France. We go here. Ooh, K15. Is... You are bang on the mark again. 100 yes. points. You guys are good. You guys are really good at this. Keeping on the dog theme here, a Labrador Retriever. What country is that from? And its capital city. Let's go England. OK, let's go England. What do you think, no? Maybe because it's so random. I will tell you, they, they speak English. They could only ask us because let's... it's related huh? to England. Let, let, uh, they speak English there. Oh, they speak English there. <laughs> they speak so it's English not England. There. 
And just, you know, just maybe just go somewhere on the map. I don't know, you know, anywhere on the map. America, America, Canada. We go to... Anywhere at all. We go to New York. We go to New York. We go, I don't know exactly go New where... York. I don't know exactly where New York is, mate. I would say here. Can, Can I? I? K9 is correct, absolutely. It's actually K9. in Ottawa, Canada. K9. K9 for the dog. 100 points. Oh, straight in. Origins of the boxer dog. A boxer, uh, you know? A boxer. Is it Dutch or German? Could be one. I say <laughs> Germany. Good okay, job. it's a good good guess. Got a Germany uh, 2016, correct? Absolutely, 100 points. 100 points. Bang on. Bullseye. Right, last one. The Canicosso. Where did that originate from? Ah, that's Italian, the way you said it, Capital it's Italian. City. The way you said it, it's Italian. It's, 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 it's in my blood, guys, it's in my blood. K16, K16, blood. K16 covers the most. <laughs> K16. K16. No, K16 is bang home, on. Home, Once home. again, Cani Costo is a type of Mastiff. Straight to the top of the league, Bernardo Silva. Congratulations, Ruben Mate. Diaz, well done. Man, Man City, we make a Man great City team. dominant already. VAR. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, VAR in definitely, this because... Definitely. <laughs> Two, There's two, of, two them. of them. You you get double the brains. <laughs> you get double everything. You get to confer. Oh uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, they have gone above Cody Gakpo. Yeah. yeah. On his own, got 500. I mean, I think it's pretty pathetic that I they only got, got 660 an together. Come on. But to be Astrid. fair, Bernardo Silva is sharp. And what happened Very last bright. season? Who did it on the last day? Eze and Mateta. And what did they do? Yeah, they won it as they well. They won. I'm not sure I can get on board with this two-player thing, but as yeah. you can see, <laughs> Diaz and Silva are top. And, of course, Manchester City <laughs> face Brentford uh, this weekend, which I, on paper looks like a game they always win, but I know Brentford have caused them some issues in the past. Obviously, yeah. no Ivan Tony this time, so interesting to see. City have looked absolutely dominant yeah. this ish, season. Ish, ish. We'll see. <laughs> Still a long way to go. Anyway, time for a break, because, as always, inclusivity is always the name of the game, and especially on the final part of Welcome to the Weekend. If you're hearing impaired, you've got cerebral palsy, visually impaired, you're an amputee, there is a pathway for you. Not just regular people can play football, everyone can play football. Welcome back to the final part of the show. Now, we've just had an epic <laughs> summer of sport with the Euros and the Olympic Games. And on top of that, the Paralympics finished in Paris uh, early, late last week. Yeah, I need no reason to shout out that China and Great Britain led the way on the medal count in France. But back in England, there's plenty to celebrate when it comes to disability sport here too, as Jack Grealish explains. Every season, thousands of people with a disability play in Premier League community football programmes. Football's just my passion. Football gives me that. Release. They each have their own unique story and have overcome their own challenges. If you put your mind to it, you can do it. But they all share one thing, a love of football. She's Villa Villa Villa. Because everyone deserves their chance to dream. I get so emotional because everybody can play. It's more than a game. Yeah, yeah Thomas, a very good striker. Hopefully he can bag a goal or two. Connor's CP is very mild oh, look for at limbs, oh, so obviously it's very difficult, you know, sometimes to see it when he's moving, but when he was a lot younger, that wasn't the story. This boss, boy boss, was born yeah. at 24 drive, weeks drive, and two drive, days, drive, 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 as big as my hand, six and a half months in hospital, and this is what pan disability has done for our boy. It's too close, man. Oi! <laughs> my anxiety just sets off if crowds are chanting, not too loud, that's what my earphones on. I actually have fidgeted a lot, like mess around with stuff, tapping and um, just mess about. I don't like the word disability, it's ability at the end of the day. They're just like any other person. <laughs> Nobody's better than you, my love. Well, please, come here. Having had it since I was born, you don't know any different. But when people describe what it's like to see normally, it's like you notice the differences. Harry's got... Um, nystagmus due to ocular cutaneous albinism. His vision for looking in the distance for crossing roads or where a ball's coming from is impaired. He was born normal hearing and then when he was about two and a half years old he caught meningitis, pneumococcal meningitis and we think that's what caused the hearing loss. 
recently had the operation in November last year to have a cochlear implant. I've got like like one of the worst hearing. When I take them off, I can't hear a thing. Go on, Jane. Yeah. I'm I'm fine. I don't want people like constantly asking if I'm all right. Like I just you just want to fit in. If you're hearing impaired, you've got cerebral palsy, visually impaired, if you're an amputee, there is a pathway for you. Not just regular people can play football, everyone can play football. It's lovely to look around and just see all the inclusivity, different, different abilities, all coming together as one so they can enjoy one sport that they all love. She's actually been on a team with all boys and it doesn't bother her one bit because it's football. He found football at the age of four years old and that was it. That's his life involving football. Football has given him a confidence because it's given him something positive about his eyesight. Football has given me more confidence about myself to go to wherever else I can need to go. Hmm. When we see all the kids that take part in all these tournaments, you can hear the emotion. I get so emotional because everybody can play. Everybody can play. You can come onto the pitch and just keep playing football and forget about everything else. It's a very big release of endorphins, energy, and just happiness, really. To see her happy makes me happy, and I love that. I really do. Oh, brilliant. I love stuff like that. The Premier League, yeah, continue to do to do brilliant things. Uh, right, let's head back to Kyle now. And Kyle, you've got the player and manager of the month announcement, haven't you? I do. Whilst you've all been sat there having fun, enjoying yourselves over the last 50 minutes, I've been waiting for these to drop. So let's announce them. Player of the month. One and only, Erling Haaland, two hat-tricks in three games in August. That's his third Player of the Month trophy. <laughs> wow. Uh, and Manager of the Month, that one was announced uh, very shortly. Uh, I mean, this is the goal that he scored just now. I mean, sensational Erling Haaland. What a performance throughout August. Incredible stuff. Just, you can't stop him. Once he gets started, you cannot stop him, as I mentioned third prep player of the month award for that man i'm having a big smile on my face as i'm announcing that one and then we've got our manager of the month award fabian hertzler three matches two wins one draw the youngster i will say because he's younger than me i'm not going to reveal my age but he's younger than me and he's managing in the premier league what an august it was for the brighton manager sensational stuff uh, no shout for Arna Slot we all thought he was going to get it didn't we quick one on that what has he got to do to win that award um score more goals <laughs> win more games <laughs> win more games really <laughs> right well our attention now turns to goal of the month that one's not been announced just yet but there's eight goals on the shortlist we've been podding all of these microphones right here we've been using them to discuss to battle to argue who we think our goal of the month should be will i'm going to start with you speaking of uh, liverpool you chose luis diaz's why is that yeah i just thought it was a lovely counter-attacking goal. Uh, Jota had a ball, as you can see there. Swiftly moves up to midfield, gets the ball to Diaz, um, and then on his, um, not his regular foot, his left foot, goes in and lovely finish. Back of the net, love that finish. Unbelievable finish just here. I mean, that pass from Jota. Yeah. I'm excited to see what he can do this season, but Diaz scoring goals. Dan, he started want... the season on fire as well. He really has. Dan, I want to go straight into your one. Uh, you've chosen this one just here. Talk to us about it. Jared Bowen, what a strike. Right. I think from going from defending the ball and then breaking from the back all the way, driving it to the f um, to forward. I thought the way Max Kilman sort of um, evaded all the tackles in the midfield and then I think that's a pure, pure strike. That little reverse finish there, beauty of a goal. And I had to give it to Max because we grew up in West, West London playing football together, you, would you believe? And he never did that to me. And so if he's doing that at the EPL level, yeah. I've got to give him his flowers. Wow. I've got to give him his okay. flowers. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Now, guys, you've heard from our two choices right here. I can't wait for this one to drop. Hopefully, I'm sure there'll be some bangers in there. 
Yeah, Cole Palmer's against uh, Wolves. Uh, no, to be fair, I'm not even just saying it, but that was an unreal goal. <laughs> it was. Let's move on. It Let's was. move anyway, on. Let's move guys, on. Move guys, on. we got rid of fantasy hat trick. Is everyone happy? Because we've got a new game, and it's yeah, called... yeah, I'm not riding any more bikes. Yeah, trust me. right. It's called Club <laughs> Call. I'm just going to explain the rules. Okay. Um, each presenter will pick three clubs each week and a prediction that that club will either have won, lost, or draw. So it doesn't matter the score. It, you just need to get the result right. Okay. Um, so the three clubs have to come from three separate fixtures. So, for instance, you couldn't pick this weekend Man City to win and then Brentford to lose yeah, because yeah, obviously yeah. they're playing against each other. Um, and then you cannot pick the teams you pick again until you have made a prediction for every other club in the Ooh. league. Now, this is how the points work. You have one prediction correct, you get two points. Two predictions right, you get five points. And then if you get all three predictions right, you get a massive 10 points. Right, let's go straight to JJ. JJ, who have you picked for your three clubs this weekend? Well, I think I've gone for... I've got to try and remember these. Yeah, I know. Oh, wow. Um, I think I've gone for Brentford to lose to yeah. City. Yeah. I've gone for Nottingham Forest to lose to Liverpool. Yeah. And I think I've gone Aston Villa as well. Aston Villa I to... Think. Let's wait. Let the, the big reveal. Yeah, yeah. Got, there we go. Love You've win. gone Aston okay. Villa to win. OK, I like Have that. Got, I've gone Ipswich to lose to the manager of the month. Fabian Herz, that's Brighton. Um, I, this is Rogue. I've gone Tottenham. Oh, he's missed it. I'll go Aston Villa yeah. to beat Everton. And I've gone Tottenham to draw oh. in the North London I, derby. I, I would never state claim to call the North London derby, but here are mine. Manchester United to win away, Brighton win at home, and also Villa to win at home as well. Look at that. You've gone for three wins. Yeah, yeah, straight on. Mensa has also made his predictions, um, but... I don't oh, think there they them. are. No, oh, there we they do, are. We do What's Mensa gone for? Mensa's gone. Is it to lose? Yeah. Gone. Oh, my God, he's gone two of the same as me. <gasps> He's gone Chelsea. I, I bet like you've been on like hanging around like the that. Tottenham Stadium looking at dogs. Oh, That's why. Carl, what sure? you got? Carl, what you got? Let's have a look at Kyle's picks. No, nope, we don't have, have Kyle's picks. OK, Kyle's. we don't. Uh, right, it's been great having you in the studio. Oh, it's a joy. It's a joy. Thank you for having me. Let's just hope this brings Arsenal the win against it Tottenham this Arsenal. weekend. Absolutely Gunners, not. Pray Enjoy for me, it. Please. We'll see you later. next week. Bye-bye. See you later.